uh, joining us now to talk uh, all things roses and fertilisers, uh, Rachel Matushka from Trelaw Roses in Victoria. Um, Rachel, good morning to you and welcome to South Australia. Oh, good morning to you too. Uh, tell, uh, what's it like over there? Beautiful. Is it Warrnambool? Uh, no, I'm just sort of an hour your side of Warrnambool, ah. so just past Mount Gambier, really. So, okay, but... a little bit of rain, mist or anything like that? A little bit of rain. Really cold. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, Trelaw Roses, you, you uh, obviously use the Nutrog products. Uh, oh, okay. We've had a chat to you before about that. But just tell us, yeah. South Australian listeners, about uh, Trelaw Roses, a bit of background. Okay. So Trelaw Roses started in round about the 1960s. So we're coming up to our 60th year. Um, we... Basically, in that time, have grown to be Australia's largest rose farm. We cover about four properties an hour the other side of Mount Gambia um, and grow about a million roses a year. So we have quite a lot of uh, production happening during the year. And, and sort of any particular style of rose or the, just the general rose collection that the public like? Uh, no, we actually introduced a lot of rose varieties from um, courts of Germany, which are absolutely the best with disease and pest resistant at, at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, plus, we grow an awful lot of other roses from other growers, so we're the main import point of the David Austin ranges. Um, we bring in the Dixon roses as well from Ireland, and we grow pretty much everything else except for the Delbards, I think. So, Did, um, now, yesterday was it? Yesterday you had your big rose pruning day. Yeah, we did. It's coming up to that time of year where every rose grower starts to get the shivers a bit. Picking up those second tiers for pruning can be the most daunting thing for a rose grower because, you know, have you cut the wrong bit? Are you going to kill the plant by mistake? Um, it's always best if you can get to a pruning demonstration from your local rose society and just get a little bit of confidence before you pick up those second tiers and start attacking the plant. Mm. So we actually had our rose pruning day yesterday and we had uh, Helen from Utrog came down and gave a little okay. bit of a talk on fertiliser and things like that. We had a rep from Felco about how to look after your secateurs and all the pruning equipment you needed. That's a good idea. Had sausage sizzle and coffee to keep us warm. And then we had two people out there giving demonstrations on how to do um, hybrid teas and standards and floribundas, um, how to plant roses, so standards and bushes. Mm -hmm. And we did a pruning demonstration on a climber as well, which is quite a, a bit of effort, I found out. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so what are some of the basic rules with pruning roses i mean if you can't get to a class and you, you, you there's your rose bush it's sort of been beautifully productive all year looking a bit bare what, what are some of the basics the rules that okay. you should follow so this covers your normal hybrid teas ground uh flora bundas mm. um standards things like that um it doesn't cover your once flowers because they're a different situation. Your weepers and your climbers, sometimes it's best just to leave them if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but for your normal bushes, what you do is you take them down to one third of their height at the moment. So take away two thirds of the plant. Um, you've got to get rid of any diseased or dying wood. Anything that looks a bit sort of damaged from rubbing on other branches and things like that, and anything that's really small growth or little mm. dainty growth. Um, and basically, that's it. So it's not really hard. It's just the confidence that you take to get those thick tears out. Now, now Rachel, so. some of the roses over here in Adelaide are looking still good. They're flowering. They've got leaves on. Just leave them, oh, you think? Yeah. Look, um, most pruning is done at the end of June, early July. Yeah. So the rose is still a little bit too early to do it right now. Mm. Um, but you can clean up your roses if you've got early dormant plants. Oh, yes. But basically just leave them for a bit until that end of June, early July, mm. and then you can start trimming them up. It will send them into dormancy a little bit. But the roses need to have that time where they're cleaned up. Um, it's also a time where you spray some lime sulphur around the place mm -hmm. so you get rid of any black spot powdery mildew in your garden. Okay. gives you a fresh start in spring. What about fertiliser? Well, that's the thing. That's the next thing you've got to do. You've always got to 
start your new growing season at the same time you're finishing up the old one. So the first thing you want to do after you've done your pruning pruning and your lime sulphur is put down some sea mungus on the ground. Okay. This really helps your rose bush grow for the new season and gets everything started off really well. Um, you can also top up your mulch at that time. Um, we recommend people use something called Hu Flung Dung, yeah. which absolutely is amazing and gives your plant a really good start along with the sea mungus in the, for the new season. Terrific. Hey, Rachel, thank you for that. It's, uh, I'm sure it'll give people a little bit of confidence if they've not pruned before, but as you say, the third off, tidy the bush up, any weak growth, any growth going in the wrong direction, and it's yeah. pretty basic, isn't it? Oh, it is, and definitely trot along to one of those uh, pruning demonstrations because it really helps, and you can ask questions. Exactly right. Rachel, thanks for your time this morning. Um, mm-hmm. I know I've bought roses online over the years from Trelaws. you still do that, the mail order stuff? Oh, definitely. Mm. We've got a huge online presence. So yes. jump on our website, trelawroses.com.au. There's heaps of rose information there. A little bit of the pruning is on there as well. Mm. Um, and, yeah, or you can just give us a call. We're quite happy on 03552923367. Rachel, lovely chatting with you. No worries, thanks. Cheers. Rachel Matushka there from Trelaw Roses, Portland. God's country, home of the Tigers. Yeah. Well, it's not far from Mount Gambier, is it? Not far. What would it be, an hour's drive? No. Uh, yeah, just out of the mount. Yeah, better. Yep. Yeah, better. Used to play in the same footy league. Oh, come on. They don't anymore. No. Oh. Nope. Right. Couldn't make the grade. Ah, they stayed over in Victoria now, oh. so anyway. <laughs> Good spot, though. Very nice. Yeah, it's a lovely Beautiful. spot. I've driven past there. And, yeah, Trelaw's biggest rose growers, a million roses. Mm. But cold. <sighs> this time of year. Yeah, well, it just shows you how tough roses are. That's right. You know, they sit out now, sunshine, 50 degrees, 48 degrees, whatever it got to this year, 47, 48. And take it. Take it, flower. And then <laughs> go down there and freeze a little bar.